Emptiness is this really vortex of life energy where everything is interconnected and everything comes out of it. So emptiness is your wide openness to see whatever is coming to you in this life. Ah, wow, this is new. How interesting. That is empty. We participate in the mystery of Christ. Paul said, you are free in Christ, free of this old binding sin of self-centeredness and pride. Then you live in the vision of love and kingdom of God, which is peace of equals, where justice is flowing. I was born and raised in a third generation Christian family in Korea, Presbyterian family. So I went to church every morning and every Sunday. But my encounter with the Buddhism actually started with my personal struggle. At the time I was going through my divorce and I didn't know what to do about this. There's so much suffering, I don't know whether I do it or not. I was teaching women and religion in Cambridge at the time. Then one day, I walk home. I discovered this Korean temple in the middle of a central square in Cambridge. So I walk in, and they have a meditation instruction. So I sat and I learned meditation instruction because I need to do something for my suffering. Then I went to my the very first interview with the Zen master. So he asked me, why are you here? So I said, oh, I'm suffering, you know, I did all my melodramatic stories about, you know, I love this man so much, but, you know, he become a religious fundamentalist. What can I do? And, and maybe I have to leave. So I pour out all my suffering you know, expecting his empathy. Then the master looked at me in a very quiet uh, spirit and asked me, so? I said, I told you all this suffering story and you just, your question is so? So I was kind of angry inside, I felt. This gem master, doesn't know psychology 101 and pastoral counseling 101. He heard this story of suffering. He need to give us some comfort. But he said, so? So I was kind of dumbfounded. Then you know, after a little bit of silence, he asked me, you know, it's very interesting. The first noble truth of Buddhism is life is suffering. Everybody is suffering. And you just think you are the only one who are suffering in this world. So why do you think you are so special? The first question, first Gong Han, Zen Master Sung San asked me was, who are you? Then he said, if you don't know that answer, go to the Dharma room and sit and meditate. Just ask this question, who am I, who am I, and get the answer. And if you get the answer, come back to me to report. And until that time, you just sit down and ask, who am I? So you breathe in, who am I, and breathe out, don't know. Who am I, don't know. That's all you need to do. <laughs> then he said, you will find the answer, and you will find your true self, then you will not suffer anymore. So many years passed with this question, who am I, really, and don't know. So that was the beginning 
of my journey. Keep this don't know mind. But in the beginning, this、uh, don't know gave me kind of anxiety. It's like your bottom fall apart, and if really I don't know the ground of my being, really what am I? So it gives me kind of a、um, uneasy feeling. But with practice over the year, I started to learn how to be relaxed, how to be. Just to be in that big don't know, with the trust. In that trust, everything is possible. So when my don't know becomes bigger and bigger, my freedom, and also my peace and acceptance, is getting bigger and bigger. So Zen Master Sung San really gave me. The wonderful first question, first question: Who are you? And don't know. It is very difficult for Western young Western student to understand emptiness. So when I, as soon as I talk about emptiness, they think emptiness is psychological emptiness. So they have a big hole here in their heart, or they feel lonely, they feel unloved, and meaninglessness, or sometimes nihilistic, and just、uh, something is not there. They need to feel in. They think emptiness is that very negative way. But Buddhist emptiness is not that. <laughs> Buddhist emptiness is, in a way, it is a fullness. So I always liked what Thich Nhat Han said: "Empty of what? That is important. Empty of this solid, unchanging, fixed self, a fixed nature. So emptiness is this." Really, vortex of life energy, where everything is interconnected, and everything come out of it. So emptiness is your wide openness to see whatever is coming to you in this life. Ah, wow! This is new. How interesting! That is emptiness. Everything is possible. It's like、uh, actually, we don't know what is the best for our life. Whether what we think it is necessary for us to be happy and to be wholesome, we need to have this and this and this. That's what we think. Maybe it's not what we really need to have an enlightened life. So this don't know mind taught me. Radical humility. You really don't know. Being in Christ and Buddhist notion of no self and true self have something in common. You are free from this binding ego. Then open to receive love of God and open to. Act as a good Christian disciple or a good bodhisattva. My favorite words from Christian tradition actually came from so-called Gnostic gospel, Gospel of Thomas. There, Jesus talks about salvation. Jesus said. If you bring out what is within you, what is within you will save you. But if you cannot bring out what is within you, what is within you will destroy you. So whenever I heard that 
message of Jesus, I feel, yes, that's what is within you. It's true self, our true self, which is not bounding to either our sin or this unchanging, solid illusion of a self. Gautama became Buddha because he woke up. Jesus, the son of Mary, became Christ, the son of God, because he woke up to the divine spirit that was given to him in his very being. Karl Rahner said, to say that Jesus is divine means that Jesus realized the full potential of what it means to be human. What it means to be human is to wake up to, to be open to the Spirit of God that is given to us, that is given to us by God in our very, in our very beings. When we are created, when we, when we come forth, we already are human beings endowed with God's Spirit, sustained by God's Spirit. Our problem is, we don't know it. We don't trust it. Maybe we've grown up in situations where that has just become so obscured. And Jesus or Buddha can help us realize it. But when we realize it, it's not just something that is up here. It's a realization that becomes power, energy, transformative, or what Christians call grace. Grace is not something from outside. Grace is the very presence of God within us, enlightening us, uh, humanizing us. The greater our humanity, then the greater capacity we have to receive God's grace in Christian theological terms. Teilhard says the fire of heaven has to come down on something. We're expected to do our part in developing our human nature, even though that too is a grace. So every step forward we take to develop our nature, you know, God's grace is there to meet us, to enliven us, to enrich it. To become one with yourself, to uh, see the breath of the self, or the light of the self, or the beauty of the self, is then to recognize the, uh, the breath and the beauty and the light of Christ. Because we are not separate. It is Christ growing within us in all that we do.